Hey everyone, welcome once again to Pathways of Hope. My name is Jake Tan and I'll be giving today's meditation. So we're looking at the Gospel of John today, that's chapter 12. And it's verse 1 onwards. We're actually given the setting of Bethany. That's basically the place that Jesus is at before he goes to Jerusalem. And what's important about Bethany? Well, if you read the passage, we're looking at the family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And the context here is that uh, Jesus just raised Lazarus from the dead. And they're, you know, suddenly like normal. They're eating over a table together. The sisters of Lazarus are serving them. And suddenly we have Mary uh, come to Jesus with this bottle, this flask of oil to anoint Jesus' feet. And you might think, okay, why the feet? Well, it was Jewish custom that when you enter a house, uh, you basically clean your feet. You, know, you kind of wipe it as you enter the house and you leave your footwear outside or towards the door and Mary was just basically like cleaning Jesus' feet quite thoroughly more than the usual and here we have one of Jesus' apostles uh, Judas suddenly give a comment about it where that could have been used better especially with like how the nature of the ministry you know Jesus' ministry is quite simple they don't harbor expensive items and things like that and it was quite costly. It was 300 days worth of wages. That's, that's quite substantial. That's almost a year's worth of working. And it was being used there not for the poor, not for the ministry, but to basically like give some sort of special treatment to Jesus' feet or to Jesus in this case. And you might think that, okay, Judas does have a point, but it's also important to see the comments, why Judas makes that yeah, remark. It's not because Jesus, uh, Judas really cares for the poor. It's because Judas actually is, um, is a thief. Well, that's what the gospel says. And here we have Jesus touching on that a little bit, checking our motives about uh, why we care for the poor, but also to leave alone those gestures of sacrifice for the Lord or for Him. And how they, in a way, supersede charity in that aspect of like giving resources or donation and uh, I wonder why I, I, I as I read this I, I wonder why Jesus comments on it that way and I think it has a lot to do with character the character of, pers- of people when it comes to their resources it reminds me of um, a group of missionary workers that I used to also work with um, they're, they belong to an outreach called Christ Youth in Action so basically these are uh, full-time missionary youth workers who spend their time uh, working with the youth or university students to have them come to an encounter with the Lord to have a deeper appreciation for the faith here in the Philippines and for many especially if they come from good schools or you know they're college graduates they finish their undergrad programs for them to what they usually do is that instead of going to work right away whether it's a corporate job uh, some sort of uh, work related to their course uh, or later on uh, later studying they actually set aside time the best years of their youth usually is around for one to three years uh, actually doing the youth work with Christ Youth in Action or CYA for short and I've heard even on a personal level where you know it's like wasting your time because you know some people would argue that you can best help people by earning a lot of money and then donating it to places that uh, would best need it and they could serve the poor, serve those who are less fortunate, so on and so forth. And, you know, that has some bearing. But for me, and I think for the Lord as well, um, if we offer something very precious to Him, our time, our resources, things that are valuable in our life, our careers, what our dreams even, um, the Lord desires that, that we offer the most important things in our life to Him. As a way of just glorifying him and in this case mary to mary it might have been this flask this oil that was very precious to her and for us it begs the question what's the most important thing in our lives right now and is that something we are offering to the lord i think that's something we should be reflecting on especially as you enter this holy week because jesus did not withhold anything for us and we get to see that as each day plays out, especially as we go towards the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So just something for us to think about, that uh, despite the many good things in this world, Jesus invites us, the Lord invites us to set our eyes on 
the most important thing. And that's glorifying the Lord with our lives and everything else will follow. So that's it for this meditation. I hope it was insightful for us. I invite you to, again, uh, read the gospel. Let's ponder on the most important thing in our life right now and see if that's something we are glorifying the Lord with. And if not, then let's ask for forgiveness, ask for repentance, ask for guidance on how we can do that, even if it might be hard for us. And let's invite the Lord more and more into our lives as we experience the Holy Week this year. So God bless. And again, uh, feel free to share this reflection, this sharing, uh, this meditation, and uh, more to come. So God bless you this Holy Week.